Welcome to the CADFEM ANSYS tutorials. In this presentation we shall be looking at how to deal with the thermal management of electrical and electronic devices using ANSYS ice pack. Our starting point on this occasion will be a variable frequency drive power transistor and we shall therefore be looking at fluid flow and thermal conduction. We shall see that on a modular system a variety of simulation objects are assembled which makes for an efficient simulation process. To finish with, we shall carry out model variant studies in order to investigate various heat sinks and cooling fans and their influence on temperature. The starting point for our analysis is ANSYS ice pack, which can be found under component systems within Workbench. We shall be utilizing intelligent objects to set up our analysis within ice pack. What we see here is the cabinet or computational area, which constitutes the entire computational domain in which various objects such as the fan, the power transistor, the diode, the heat sink, and various material layers and other power electronics of that type are constructed, thereby defining the analysis step by step. The objects are sourced from a library which provides components and elements suitable for numerous applications, which means they can facilitate efficient modeling. The individual objects are parameterized. For example, we can assign properties to power electronics elements, including, for example, power loss. Likewise, the diode retains its power loss. Then to the heatsink. In this case, the definition contains 15 cooling fans. We could equally create a definition containing 10 cooling fans. However, we'll keep to 15 for our first step. So we can see that all these objects have been constructed parametrically, meaning that later on it'll be very easy to carry out variations by changing these parameters. Once the definition has been completed, we check the model and start the analysis. We're shortening this step to get to the results, which we can now see. In order to visualize the results, we select the objects whose temperature we'd like to observe, and we then get an idea of the temperature within these solid objects. In order to see the temperatures in a sectional view, we select the corresponding sectional plane, and we can then slide the plane through the model. Let's delete the image inside the solid body and define a second plane in order to look at velocities. which allows us to see the velocity profile across various flow channels. So as to check how the fan influences the temperature, seeing as the temperatures are too high at 97 degrees, we can change the one fan for another. So we delete the present fan, select a new one from the library, position this in the correct place, and update the analysis. we see that the new fan leads to a reduction in temperature from 97 to 82 degrees. We can carry out further modifications by changing the heat sink. Instead of manually changing the number of fins, our approach will take the form of a parametric trial. We enter a parameter value and then we define the parameters for ANSYS Workbench. This includes not just the input variables, 
but also the result quantities. And we transfer these values into Workbench. These are the input variables, so we have the number of fins, and the result quantity equates to the global temperature. We now have a parameter set within Workbench which parametrically controls the ice pack analysis in terms of the number of fins, and which calculates the global maximum temperature in the form of the result. So we have input variables and result quantities, and we can modify these either by calculating the manual variations by hand, so to speak, or if there are several parameters, by carrying out a systematic variation using OptiSlang. Using update all design points, we can now analyse all five variations one after the other, enabling us to see the extent to which the temperature depends on the number of cooling fins on our heat sink. This correlation can be copied into Excel via the Windows clipboard. We can also visualise the correlation within ANSYS. You can see from the curve that as the number of fins increases, the temperature initially decreases. But you can also see that with about 25 fins, the temperature goes up again. If you then amend the analysis, adding one or two additional designs with more fins, you'll see that the temperature continues to increase. So we're faced with two opposing effects. The temperature decreases due to the increasing number of fins. The greater the number of fins, the greater the flow resistance, leading to an increase in temperature at some point. This constitutes a valid way of finding the optimal point, which means the simulation can indeed be regarded as a valuable tool.